In this tutorial, we'll be setting up the sketchy lines for sending out our image into Photoshop. All right, so I have the start file opened up here. I'll go ahead and open up this and show you. The Revit Photoshop Watercolor Rendering Module 1 Start. And inside of here, we have a simple model that has a floor plan. It's a gathering space of people to assemble around uh, this element here. So we're mostly interested in our 3D view, which is the face to exterior. And you'll see right now I've got it set for um, shaded mode. There also are some elevations in here which would be nice to send out as well using the same methods that we could use inside of Photoshop to um, illustrate and render these. But we're mostly interested in the phase 2 exterior view here. And let's go into our graphic display settings to set up how we're going to send this out with, um, with the hidden lines. So graphic display options. Inside of there we have the ability to switch this. We're going to go and go into a hidden line. Um, we'll also can explore some of the transparencies, which we can also do inside of um, Photoshop. I'll go ahead and apply this. So this will convert this into an hidden line rendering. Okay, and it gives us pretty good there. So if I go and explore some of the transparency, I can apply that transparency on there. And you can see it gives me a little bit of a wireframe see-through option on there. We'll go ahead and keep that thing down. Our silhouettes for this, we're going to keep as wide lines. <clears throat> convert this thing back to a straight hidden line with no transparency. Um, these shadows here is what we're interested in for now. We're going to go and cast shadows. And this will be based off of our uh, position of our sun that we have in our scene. So I have this one set so we're kind of lit from over here but giving us a little bit of shadow so we get kind of the a cross fade with our shadow to help define some of that form. Now the ambient shadows, let me go ahead and close that and I'm going to zoom in. The ambient shadows will look at the adjacency of two um, pieces of geometry and add basically an ambient occlusion shadow to these elements here. So it's a really nice little effect. So I'll go ahead and go back inside of our graphic display options and underneath shadows, I'll turn on ambient shadows. And if you watch this area here, you'll see that the elements that are close to each other start to occlude and provide a little bit of shadowing inside the um, corners. So you can see here this, this tower is creating a little bit of a shadow on the surface. So it gives us a nice little sense of depth to the model. We are going to be sending out two different renderings, one with shadows and one without shadows, and we'll bring those in as two different layers inside of Photoshop. So we can use these to help guide us um, and also multiply on top. We can also send out just the ambient shadows, which can add a little bit of uh, detail to the model as well. So we'll probably be sending out a third version of that as well and explore that as a multiplied layer. So for now, we're going to turn those on. We're mostly interested now in the sketchy lines. So if I enable these and I hit apply, you'll see it's going to take the edges of this and I'll apply a little bit of a jitter. It also breaks up the line, which kind of gives it a hand felt, uh, hand feeling to the drawings. So I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. So you can see here it's kind of breaking it up. Now I usually will like about two, but you can kind of go pretty nuts with this. So if I go to 10, You'll see it really starts to wiggle the lines and give you a completely hand-drawn um, feel to it, like you had a lot of coffee. Um, but it starts to blend and mix things a little bit and put more lines on there than um, I would like to have. Um, we can also get some of that effect when we hand-draw inside of Photoshop. So I usually like to keep it a little bit softer just to give our base lines, and then when we go over it inside of Photoshop, we can add this um, more roughness to it as needed. The extension is this little line that extends out of the intersection. So if I hit apply, you'll see it's giving me these little extending lines out. Um, I tend to like those a little bit uh, longer than just the default. Just those I don't really mind as much as giving me the hand feeling. Uh, we don't have any lighting to concern with this one or photographic exposure. We're just going to use these settings to give it out. There's a nice little option inside of here for background which gives us a nice gradient. It looks great inside of um, Revit. However, that makes it a little bit more difficult to select this area out inside of Photoshop. So we'll go ahead and set that to none and say OK. And let me zoom out here. So I'll right click and zoom to fit. And that is essentially the view that we're going to be sending out on this model. All right, so the last thing I want to talk about is how to adjust the sun. The way that the sun is set up is just inside the view here. We'll go into our Manage tab, and we'll go to our Additional Settings, and you'll see we have our sun settings inside of here. 
And if I open that up, you can see our azimuth and our angle, our altitude is at 40. So if I bring this down to say like 10 and apply. So if you watch the shadows here, you can see it's coming at a much lower angle and it can get longer shadows there. You can also adjust the, let me put this back to 40 so we're consistent with that. You can also adjust the rotation that it's coming at. So if I set like a 90 on this one, it'll bring the sun around and if I apply that, you'll see that we can get the angle of the shadows to be in a different angle here. So right now it's filling up the roof there. So it's kind of gone around this way and added a much longer shadow. So if I do like 180, we were at, we were at 110. It should bring the sun a little bit closer to the front and send our shadows a little bit away from us. So it's kind of not exactly what I'm looking for there. But let's say if I wanted the shadows to go across the building here, we could look at increasing that. So bringing the sun around towards the left and you'll see the shadows will start to come across the model here. The only downside to this is that it starts to put our lighting within a shading set study instead of a direct lit uh, model. But it does give us some nice shadowing uh, across the model that way. So I'll go ahead and put this back 110, and you can set that however you prefer. Um, but for this exercise, we'll keep it at 110 and, and 40. And I just wanted to show you what that looks like to how to adjust that if you don't like the way the shadowing is happening on this one. All right, so that wraps up the ability to create sketchy lines in our viewport and also to adjust our settings in there. In our next video, we'll go through how to export this out as a rasterized image and get jumped into Photoshop.